In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a little more information about load bearing and non bearing walls. However, it will be at the end of the video. I'm just going to go ahead and whip through the building here. I mean, it's going to be in three phases. You're going to have one with the roof on, single story home, conventional framing. This is not an engineered type roof system like a truss or using truss joists. This might not, this video will not apply to those types of roofs. Just conventional framing, single story home. Um, and again, I drew this model and it's uh, just figured I would uh, use it to make my point here. I drew it for a different reason, but lately I've been getting a lot of questions about load bearing and non bearing walls, whether or not they can be removed. And again, I don't want to, I already made the video once and it was uh, like uh, 16 minutes. Figured that was going to be a little too long. So I'm trying to shorten it up here at the same time using these uh, animation scenes here to give you an idea. Remember, at any time you can stop the video and examine some of the sections to get a better idea um, if you're uh, trying to figure something out. Remember, the load-bearing walls will be the walls where the ceiling joists and the roof rafters are actually sitting on. This would be a good example right here. The ceiling joists lap here, and they run all the way through. This would be a load-bearing wall in the center of the roof. Here we are with the roof on it again, and this is the section I'm going to try and do a little more, provide you with a little more detail on. So here we've got the roof. There we got it without the rafters, just the ceiling joists, and here it is without the ceiling joists. And if you need to, when I'm pointing to a wall, you need to go back and watch the video. Hey, go back and watch it and get a better idea of what um, what materials are sitting on what walls. I'm going to try and go over it here to give you a, a better idea. But we're, without the roof and the ceiling joists, it's definitely going to be better. So let's go ahead and zoom in on a corner of the building here. This is a load-bearing wall. Most exterior walls are load bearing. Some of them are actually going to carry more weight than the others. However, the footings most of the time are going to be the exact same size. So I've actually seen single story homes with 24 inch deep by 12 inch wide footings all the way around the entire perimeter when uh, you could understand it over here where this could be a little bit smaller. But I believe, it's just my personal opinion, that the perimeter of the building actually ties everything together and it would be just like the uh, the walls, the top plates going all the way around. You can actually use these to tie, the to strengthen the building. So that's my guess. That's probably why they are the same sizes and they're not a little smaller even though they uh, there's not as much weight on them. So even though this is a gable wall, gable roof if you remember on this end, that's still a bearing wall, load bearing wall here. Now this wall right here this wall and this wall are going to provide structural lateral support. So if we remove this wall right here, say, hey, it, it's a non-bearing wall, nothing sitting on top of it, we can remove it. If we do, and this is a problem that I, that I run into a lot when people are asking if they can remove walls, and I'm suggesting that they don't or they shouldn't or they should contact a structural engineer, which is the same advice I would like to pass on right now. Uh, if you're going to remove a wall, you can ask me for advice, but more than likely you're just wasting your time. I've made enough videos on this. If you need a different video, um, feel free to leave the question uh, in the or your video suggestion in the comment area or send it to me directly. But this is the most common uh, question I'm, I'm receive, receiving and it have been receiving for quite some time, even though this is a non load bearing wall. And they'll provide me with pictures of, of non load bearing walls in, in their emails. If the wall is providing lateral support, 
it's keeping the building from falling over, then you can't remove it. And one of the only ways you're going to be able to know that for sure, uh, and I might sound like I'm repeating myself, the only way you're going to know that for sure would be to contact a structural engineer. You might be allowed to remove the wall or a portion of the wall, but you would need to modify the roof the ceiling joists and the roof rafters somehow. So keep that in mind. It's not just, hey, I'm going to tear this wall out and everything's going to be fine. And I am not kidding you. I have seen people tear out multiple walls. You know, Now, can you move this wall? Probably. If you move it uh, two feet in either direction, you could probably still pick up some strength here. But just to remove it completely, you might have a problem. And I hope I'm making myself clear there. Another view, this gives us a real good view. <clears throat> so this wall right here goes all the way across and connects from one end to the other end of the building and is very important. For one, it is a load-bearing wall. The ceiling joists are sitting on top of it. And for two, it's providing us with a nice tie, any structural engineer. By the way, this is a home that a structural engineer would love to see, and I designed it uh, that way myself. It has another tie going all the way across here. And this right here, even though it has a break right here in the ceiling, you could actually use some straps and some ceiling joists, let's say, to tie these two walls together, which would give you another nice uh, lateral connection. And so if you remove these walls, you weaken not only this part of the building. In some cases, you're actually going to weaken the other side. Keep that in mind. If you remove, uh, it, it's like a, having a mass. If you had a 25-foot wall, it has enough mass to provide structural support to a large section of the building. It's not just going to be the ends of the building. This is going to provide strength for this area right here also. So keep, keep that in mind. And again, remember, I'm not a structural engineer. I'm just kind of providing you with observations of things I've learned over the years. So remember, bearing wall, bearing wall. This wall, of course, is the gable wall, is not going to have as much weight on it. Okay, here we go. Non-bearing -bear wall, this is the ceiling joist lap on. Non-bearing, all of these walls would be considered non-bearing. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm not here. Here, non-bearing walls, but uh, are they providing lateral strength to this part of the house? Now, I would guess that you could remove this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall and not affect that much strength in the entire building. But if I was to provide you with, well, I will. I'll go ahead and provide you with the walls that I think you could remove in a home like this. Just to give you an idea, Let's see if we can get a scene here. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I'm going to have to bear with me there. Gonna have to draw it into place. Okay. The only walls I would think you could remove would be this one here. Th not this one. This one. This one here. The entire wall. This one and this one. That would be it out of the entire building here. I don't think a structural engineer would disagree with me because you've got enough strength here. But if you do remove any of these, a structural, like, you know, you might be able to put a beam here in this wall here, even though it's a bearing wall. Put a beam in the ceiling so you, you wouldn't see it. As long as you get a connection, um, keep the wall tied together. So if you put a beam on top of the wall here and on top of this wall here, some type of a support, you know, put some, uh, put an extra footing down here and down here. And, and strapped everything together, you could probably remove a wall like this. So keep that in mind. And you might even be able to remove a wall like this as long as it's connected all the way through to, uh, as, as long as you have some type of a connection. So again, you could put a large beam on here 
um, with the right footings underneath it and this would provide you with enough mass to tie this together but again not a structural engineer and I hope this makes sense and I hope it wasn't too long but I'm sure you'll let me know by hitting the old thumbs up button in either direction Don't forget to check out more videos at this link. You can also visit the website. The upper left-hand corner should be a button marked videos. Put together a list of videos that you might have a difficult time finding on YouTube. So organize lists in different categories. Go check it out.